What's up, guys? If you need oh, it. Friends should not be trying to convince you to skip class and they know you fail. Guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you might as well hit that subscribe button, and if not, then now let's get out to you. And today, guys, we're gonna be doing college advice for first generation kids. As you may or may not know, I am a college graduate. Like based on my experience, this is like just advice for first generation kids, so that y'all don't have to, you know, be <laughs> struggling. Okay, so. Um, I'm gonna be looking up here because this is like my notes and stuff. So number one is plan. First of all, if you want to go to college and you know you want to go to college, you need to be planning. You need to be writing this stuff out, looking at stuff, what you need to get done, and like all of the stuff that you need to do to even go to college. So that's my first thing is you need to research all information about colleges pros and cons, everything, the career choice, everything. I would say is take high school serious because um, your grades matter, like the GPA matters to like a lot of colleges, so they will look at your GPA. So my um, weighted GPA was a 4.1, but I believe my unweighted GPA was like a 3.7. Based on that, I was able to get like a lot of merit scholarships to go to certain colleges, so if you are planning on going to college, I would suggest to try to aim for like a high GPA. So making sure that you get your work done, you know, get in all your homework done. Don't procrastinate because if you procrastinate, procrastinate everything is just gonna build up. Basically. So you don't want to do that. Are you really? I mean, it's still other colleges you can get into with, without a uh, as high GPA, but the choices are very limited. So if you really want to take it serious, take do like take your classes serious get stuff done don't procrastinate talk to your guidance counselor for scholarships and programs you should take advantage of especially if you're low income like if you are somebody like two parents can just afford college or, like right after that then it's not for you but you could still take advantage of grants and scholarships but for like low income students or just people that don't have much to pay for college I would talk to your guidance counselor because they can give you like um, different websites to apply for scholarships. A lot of them do the essay required, like you guys do research essays, all of that. But you will be like thankful in the end that you did it because now you have all this money that you can put towards your tuition, basically. And yeah, so your guidance counselor, they can give you like websites, they can give, let you know like what programs they have at the school, if they do have anything that you could join and that you could do. So I would just talk to my guys talk right at the high school. Also, figure out um, what colleges for you, including the cost on in location. So this was my biggest thing. Um, like when I knew I wanted to go to college, but I never really like planned it out. It was just like a thought in my head. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, like you know. But it was never like no thought or behind it. So I basically didn't plan anything out. I didn't do none of that. I just, when I got this scholarship, like, when I saw what schools was like, was like reaching out to me, I basically just, you know, went for it. I didn't really think, oh, I'm going to go to this college, I'm going to go to this college, this college that I really want to go to. I didn't really care about none of that. I just was like, whatever college is, is like reaching out to me, giving me scholarships. That was my biggest thing because cost was my biggest thing. And then I also was trying to stay close um, to my family and stay close to my friends as well, to my old best friend. We did end up going to um, the same college together, but don't try to include that into your ultimate like decision. Make pick a college that is right for you based on location and cost. Don't choose a school just so you can be close to friends and family, which is something that I just said, because you don't want to just be making decisions and then now you get to a college you can't even afford, like you don't, they don't have the program that you want to get into, they don't have the like, you know, certain colleges are linked to like um, certain careers. So like when you get out of that college, like there people are more willing to give you a job if you went to this specific college. So don't just be picking random colleges unless you really have the degrees for it, you have like the money for it, or you just 
can just go anywhere. Pick the color that is right for you, okay? Don't be out here doing crazy stuff. So I would recommend um, to try dual enrollment if you can, which dual enrollment is basically, this is something that I wish I would have been more aware of. Like I knew, I knew what it was, but I never thought about it because I didn't really have like people, you know, telling me like, oh, do this, do that. Like, I knew students like in my early classes, like they would talk about, oh yeah, I'm doing dual enrollment so I can get this extra college credit. So like I didn't, I told y'all, I didn't think about college like that when I was in high school. Like I had the grades for it, but anything else besides grades, I really didn't care for it. So. I wasn't doing scholarships, like I wasn't applying for as many scholarships as I could have. With dual enrollment, you're basically taking some college courses while in school. Like I did take, I did take AP courses, but in order to get a college credit from the AP course that you took, you have to pass the test. Like you have to get like I think it's a four or better or three or better or something like that. So yeah, you can you might pass one section and then fill the other and then that is where the whole test out. So that was the biggest thing for me is because me, I'm not like I'm I'm a person who can remember things like really well. But like when it comes to context, like I have to actually study, study, study and study and study. So if you that type of person, if you really gonna take A P courses, I would recommend that you really like take it serious. Like me, I just did the work but I didn't really care for the test because I just wanted the GPA basically. Like, you know, I didn't really care for all the other stuff like colleges and stuff, but if you really want that um, college credit, I would, and you take taking AP classes, I would literally study, like, take it, like, so serious, like, everything, or the books, everything that you need to be doing to get that college credit. Unlike me, I didn't do that. And my next thing is, um, take a year off if you want to, okay? so. I know some people it's like if you're about to they feel like oh they have to go to school right after high school because they're going to be a failure like and stuff like that so it's kind of just like 50 50 with a lot of people but based on my experience i would say that if you really want to take a year off you should do that because say if you go to school and you didn't take a year off and you like really just struggling in your first year like you really don't know what's going on and like your courses aren't even the courses that you want to take you're not even going to have your classes because you're not prioritizing the right things like say for instance if all that is happening you're literally going to get the worst gpa ever and your gpa and then after that you will literally have to work 10 times hard to get your gpa back to where it needs to be because you didn't take that time to go find yourself you didn't take that time to travel and see what's out there for you so that would be my favorite and do what's best for you like i took a i didn't take a year off but i wish i had because just like i told y'all my freshman year of college was so terrible like so much went wrong that could have been prevented if i would have just took the time to really explore myself plan like that i told y'all and just so went so different FAFSA. So for low income students, FAFSA, yeah, you can get, you'll get aid from the government to go to school, but they're only going to give you a certain amount for a specific amount of years. I think it's like after four years, basically, or when you use the volume money or something like that. So um, you apply for the application, you want to apply as soon as it opens. So it's usually October 1st when it um, opens, but like this year of 2023, it opened in like December, late December. So yeah, you wanna apply right when it opens so you can get the most amount of money. You don't wanna wait, you wanna get it done and get it over with. And if you are an independent, you need to have all your documents, everything that you need to fill out your passport form. And if you're a dependent, then you just wanna be like letting your parents know, hey, I'm gonna need to sign this out for me. Like, you know, just telling them and letting them know about everything. And also list the schools on your passport so that the passport can send your money to the schools that you are applying to. So you know what schools you want to go to and you have a list. And you don't, even if you don't apply to those schools, still list them because when you, whenever you do get into the school and you register that term, they'll automatically have like your um, FAFSA and your financial aid and all of that and everything will be perfect and you won't have to figure out, oh, like I need this, I need that and trying to run around figure out how you can pay for classes and stuff. So yeah, list the schools on there. And they're only going to send the money to the school that you are registered for the term. Not the, they're not going to send it to every single school. Like you know, you'll be out of money if they do that. So you don't have to worry about that. Make sure you qualify for a grant and scholarship, especially if, especially if 
your low income definitely definitely exclamation smart exclamation smart okay don't be out here trying to be like everybody if you need that extra money go get that extra money okay so financial aid you get that from um, your passport and then also the school can give you more aid if you need it but they will only give it to you if you like negotiate basically with them so like if you tell them like okay like my situation has changed and whatever they'll give you more money if you can't afford um, a certain semester. You can negotiate if you have to. You should always try to get more money, especially if you are in a program that you know is very, very expensive and you don't want to use college loans, like you want to graduate debt free. I will always just always try to negotiate for them to give you more money. I never did this personally, I wish I had, but yeah, so just try to do that because it's been people that have done that and they're and they have been successful, but sometimes the school won't give you more money, but you should always just try it just in case. And you can also talk to an advisor to try to get more money as well. Like um, somebody that works in the financial aid department, any one of them can really try to help you and try to guide you in the right direction. They'll probably just give you what scholarships you can apply for, but anything will help. Only use loans if you have to, like, I, personally, I wouldn't do loans because you you have to pay that loan back with interest. So if you definitely want to graduate with no college debt, I would suggest try to stay away from loans and only use it if you really, 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 really need to. Like, if your program, like, if you literally can't afford that program at all, like, that's why you should, um, money that you have left over, you should be putting that towards your tuition always. Don't try to just spend it on stupid stuff. Put it, actually put it towards your tuition so that you don't have to use loans. Oh yeah guys, and I forgot to mention also is that um, on your taxes, make sure you file your T, um, T1037 form. Um, they usually send it in your, e in your student email, so always check your student email for those as well because you want to make sure that you file those on your taxes so that you can get a higher return hopefully if you used all your tuition so that you get a higher return and use that money for your tuition as well yeah because i forgot to say that i don't know how i forgot it but i forgot to say it okay, bye. application and fees if you go right after high school you, you usually don't have to pay an application fee because they usually have a waiver for that like it's look at the overall cost of the schools and the things that you will need so like don't just look Oh, this tuition saves you sixty six hundred dollars. Like no, no. Look at everything: room and board, like location, like how close are you going to be to the school? Are you going to be staying on campus? How much is that? Like you need to be looking at everything and how much everything costs so that you can add it up and make the best decision. Also, books. Save as much money as you can. Try to opt out of buying books at the school or from the school because nine times out of ten, you can go buy those books for cheaper. Like on Amazon, like um, there's a lot of book websites out there that offer way cheaper books than the school has them listed for. So try to save as much money as you can to put towards your tuition. Don't try to just be out there, okay, let me get this book. They say I need this book. Go look. Go look on the web on different websites and see if you can find that book somewhere else. Unless you actually need it. That's the only time you should buy it from the school. If the school, if it's only through the school, like through, um, I think it was like MH education is McGraw. If it's through McGraw, you might actually need to buy the book. Classes and schedules. When I first like try to figure out when my freshman year, like y'all, I literally went to give up. Like my um my old best friend, her sister went to college, so like she kinda knew a little bit about like how to find the like the classes to take. Like we were doing the same major, so like she kinda knew a little bit about like what classes to take and stuff like that. Like um, or like how to find a professor, but I didn't know none of that. So like, y'all, yeah, I was just trying to. <laughs> I literally was just picking the same things as her, but I shouldn't have did that. I should have just tried to figure it out on my own. But that was one of my mistakes in my freshman year. But after that, I kind of got the hang of it, and I would suggest you look up your professors and look up the classes that you need that go towards your program or your career choice. Um, so yeah, you don't just want to be picking any professors because I did that my freshman year and y'all, I literally, I didn't really like how they talk because some teachers really do teach the course and then others just grade the work and some just do too much. So rate my college professor. So that's how you can figure out the best professor for you and like, yeah, the, the way they teach and everything. Also, if you're a morning person, pick morning classes. Don't try to pick afternoon classes and you're not going to show up. If you're an afternoon person, do not try to pick morning classes thinking that you're going to show up. 
unless you really is dedicated to it. So just stick to what you're used to. Don't try to do any extreme things your freshman year. You can do that your sophomore year, okay? When you get used to the environment and being on your own without like any supervision and stuff like people making you get up for school or whatever. Pick the classes that go towards your major. If you are still unsure, talk to an advisor that can help you or figure out what you should pick as a career choice. Because your freshman year, you can make those mistakes because you can always change your major your sophomore year. So if you don't really know, just pick general studies your first your freshman year and then like figure out as you go along kind of like which career path you want to go down. Unlike the advice I'm giving because I didn't know it then, but I just was picking different classes that I didn't even need to take. So I, wait, I was literally wasting money and wasting my time. So you don't want to do that. So pick the classes that you actually need for the program. And it's working plus school. How to prioritize because I know a lot of college students like we're working while we're in school. So that's another big thing. Don't lose track of like your priorities. You still need to put school first because your job is just your job. But your college, if that's what you're going to college for, you you're trying to get to your career. So don't put working over your career. If you really really need money, that go back to a place where you can actually save money to put yourself through school. Don't try to do everything on top of everything on top of everything because you're literally going to fail. You're literally not going to be able to do both. I mean, I'm not going to say you're not going to be able to because there's some people out there that can, that can work like that. But if you literally can't work like that, then don't do too much. Don't put too much on your plate if, you, if you're not used to it. But if you're used to it, then like I me, mean, I worked well in school, I always worked well in school, so I, I kind of knew how to prioritize both. So if you just, it's good at managing your time, then you don't have to worry about that. If nobody is there to like hold your hand, nobody is there to like wake you up when you miss in school, so you need to be on that stuff. You need to be writing your calendar down, writing it in your journal, like the things that you need, the homework that you need that's due. When is it due? You need to be writing all that stuff down so you can keep track of every little thing like i used to have um a calendar journal and i would write what classes i needed on what day what homework was due that specific day then i would write down like the three days that i had but you need to prioritize having a journal or something that you can write and plan your day out don't just get up and wing it and go along with the day you need to be organized especially if there's nobody else around to really help you you, know, you need to be on it you need to be getting stuff done and my calendar my old calendar so yeah, as you can see, I had just that stuff down. So as y'all can see, I would have two Tuesdays off. I didn't really have to focus on worry about Tuesdays. Um, this is in 2022, y'all. So like, to, so kind of just I would suggest that. Also, staying off campus versus on campus. Um, you can afford to stay on campus because I know sometimes they take that out of your um, financial aid or your pass or whatever you get. I know they take that out of your scholarship, so if you can't afford to stay on campus, stay on campus, especially if you don't have to have a car and you don't have transportation, that will be the best thing for you is to stay on campus so you don't have to worry about how you can get to class and what time you need here and all that. So if you can afford to stay on campus, stay on campus. If not, you can probably look for like a student apartment nearby. That's something that I personally did that's just as, as real um reliant. It's, it's just picking what's best for you. Like if you want to stay on campus, you can stay on campus. If you don't, you don't have to. And if you are closer to home, you could probably stay at home, um, which will save you a lot more money too. And also earns in college. A lot of people just, when they go to college, <coughs> they either take like high school friends or just people in general, or they make friends there. It's really up to you. You just want to choose people who is not going to be trying to get you to go to a party at one in the morning when you got class at seven in the morning. No, it's not going to work. You want to stay around friends and stuff who going to uplift you and make you better and make you like, you know, do your best when you they know you can. And your friends should not be trying to convince you to skip class and they know you're failing. And they know you're failing. Oh yeah, so make sure you surround yourself with people who prioritize the same thing as you. Okay. My last thing would be party. Like it's okay to have fun every now and then. Like whatever you choose to do. Like you're not lame if you don't party. You're not lame if you do. It's whatever you want to do. But especially if you are sheltered, don't get lost because a lot of people who are sheltered, like when they go out and where they have their own free space, so they just do the most. Like they go crazy and they start doing too much and they lose track of why they are not even home. Like you're at college, you're here to get your life together, but they lose focus. So don't be like that.
No, you have an assignment, dude. You just gonna have to miss out on that party. So don't try to be like, well, I could just, no. Get the work done and then do what you gotta do. So I thank you guys for watching. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, I could go a little bit more in depth with some of the stuff because I can do a lot more tips and stuff that y'all have. But first generation kids, don't lose track. Stay focused. You won't figure everything out. Just take it day by day. If you have questions, talk to people. You know, ask. Don't try to just be like, I can do this by myself. Like, that's how it was. There is nothing wrong with that, but just, it's okay to ask for help sometimes, okay? Because you only one person. So don't struggle to ask somebody, okay? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. See you guys in my next video.